Board Game Maniacs, Maniac Rob here to bring you another battle report. Now this battle report is a continuation from the game Prelude to Woodbury. It's a standalone expansion for The Walking Dead All Out War by Mantic Games. Now if you've seen the other video that I posted on the channel, we played part one. It's kind of like a, a tutorial slash first solo mission for Prelude to Woodbury. Now in this one we are continuing on and playing part two. And with this one here, Brian Blake, who is to become the governor, but not yet, is going out and venturing to try and scavenge for supplies and food and everything. Not for himself this time, though, but to bring back to his brother, Philip, who is kind of in charge of this gated community called who would, would something estate. I can't remember. I'll, I'll get to it and I'll let you know when I show you the board. But this is pretty simple. At least this time, the board isn't as small as the first one because the first one was only 10 inches by 10 inch square. This one, I think it's 15 by 15 inch square, but we'll double check that. So have a seat, get ready to start killing some zombies and backing up Brian Blake before he becomes evil and starts killing everybody. Brian is not yet the villainous leader he will become. He lives in the shadow of his brother, Philip, who has led the group to Wilshire Estate upper-class gated community. Philip has sent Brian out to explore the streets and come back with something they can use to survive. I have the board all set up for this here and again this is Prelude to Woodbury part two. Now Brian's job as in the cinematics is Philip has sent him out to try to scavenge and find what he can to bring back to the gated community Wilshire Estates. So obviously with this scenario the objective is very simple. Brian, who you see right here, has to go and collect up not one, but five different uh, supply tokens. So we have one here, two, um, three, I can't remember where they are, four, and five. So that is the five of them. And you can see the gated community for where uh, Wilshire Estate starts right here. You can see the buses here and they go around the corner and it's a whole gated community. But this game is only going to be played on a 15 inch by 15 inch. So the 15 inch border is these buildings to the fences stretching across to the other fences and back this way. And that is it. That is the size of the board that we have to play. Now this here is a little bit bigger then your 10 inch by 10 inch square that we did the, for the first tutorial. So Brian is able to move around a little bit more. However, there's still the same amount of walkers, three walkers to start off, but there's more supply counters. So he can be maybe a little more reckless and not have to think as much to try to get around, but he still have to have his wits, his intelligence there, his wits that he can use to try and succeed in this mission. All of Brian's stats and the Walker stats are exactly the same. They still have the solo event cards. Now the only difference in this one is the supply cards. When we played the first one, we are only able to use the cards, the supply cards that had the zombie head icon onto it. This is different though. For this scenario, I mixed in all of the supply cards because it did say that in the book. On top of that, Brian actually starts with a gun. He's got the Beretta 92. The range of the weapon is 2 inches, it's a handgun, reliable, adds a white dice to the range attack roll. Now, reliable, I will read you what that specifically states. Reliable simply means that whenever you make a headshot, you well in the game, when you make a headshot, which is the exclamation mark, you have to roll for an ammo to see if your, your weapon runs out of ammo. In this case, however, because it's a reliable weapon, if you fail, your roll to reload your weapon, you get to re-roll it once, and that is what reliable means into this. All the other stuff stays the same. We start the game with threat level of one, and as you can see, I have everything set out here. Brian starts off with this five. Now we checked in the book, because this is part two, and we already played part one, you don't carry on your wounds, your bite marks, you don't carry on any weapons or supplies you picked up. So because of that, he just starts off fresh with the Beretta, which is really good. Hopefully, Brian will be a little bit more smoother and, you know, be able to su successfully complete this mission a little faster than last time. 
Spoiler alert, if you never watched uh, part one of this, Brian had a lot of trouble. His health went down drastically. He got bit, but he managed to pull it off in the end. So hopefully this will happen too as well. Now one thing I want to take note of too as well, it says in the book, is that Brian here, when he starts, he has to start within four inches, or within a four inch range right here, Brian, nothing has to be there. So like no obstacles, no terrain, no uh, supply counters or anything has to be within this four inch range when he starts. So that's why he's starting right here. I did pre-measure to make sure of that. So the board is set up according to the book. And let's go on to turn one. One thing I forgot to uh, take note of is the Breda, where it has the reliable, it also has which is called mayhem. So whenever Brian shoots this, it's gonna create the mayhem. What mayhem is in the game is that any walker that is within a 10 inch range of where the noise has originated, in this case in Brian's hand, it will shamble six inches to Brian. So therefore, it's not just when you run you make noise, not mayhem, and one walker, the closest walker within 10 inch range will shamble. In this case, with mayhem, all walkers within 10 inch range of Brian will shamble. So we have to keep that in mind when we use that, that it's gonna create mayhem. And another thing which I'm gonna to try to forget, because uh, try to remember, not forget, I said that backwards, so let's try that again. Another thing that I'm going to try to remember that I forgot in the first game is in the end phase, we do have to put the threat track up by one. That's every end phase. Now that is different than when you play just a normal game with the two player or what have you, because this here is a solo mission, we have to do that. So hopefully I will remember. Brian has some choices here now. The problem is, is we have a zombie directly in front. We have a zombie behind the barricade right here. And we also have a zombie, well, half a zombie behind this truck. So is Brian going to shoot first and then stop, not bother asking questions later? Or is Brian going to start trying to make his way up to one of these two? <sighs> now when he shoots, the only problem is, is it creates mayhem, which means all zombies will just, you know, start shambling close. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do here. It's kind of tough. But, you know, I'm going to just stop thinking about it and just start doing stuff because Brian's a man of action. And that's all what he's going to do. So Brian, for his first turn, um, he is going to run. Yeah, he, he's going to run up to the side of the barricade. So he's going to go yoink, right there. And when he runs, what happens, it creates noise. So when it creates noise, we have to measure to see which zombie is the closest within the 10 inch range, and they shamble six inches. Let's check this one out. So I'll flip over to the zombie side, could probably help. So that's five inches, well, four and a half inches. And this one is going to be five and a half. So this zombie, the green machine right there, Great machine. He's gonna shamble six inches. Now the thing is, is they have to shamble in a straight line. So as you can see, he's gonna go boom and hit into the barricade. Just like that, so he's not able to attack Brian. So that's not too bad. So that was the first action for Brian. He ran. As I said before, Brian is a man of action. That's right, because he wants to try to build up in the community his, his reputation and ranks of being merciless and wanting to just take back as much supplies. And that may mean shooting some walkers or, yeah. So, because he's here for his second action, because he ran for his first action, second action, he's going to none other than shoot that green machine. For shooting, the zombie gets one, and Brian, he gets two white. And the reason why he came up with the white is number one, he has one white die for shooting. And because he has the handgun, he has add a white die to range attack rolls. So therefore, he gets two white against one red. So let's see what's gonna happen here. Now, I know this is going to create mayhem and it may cause havoc, so hopefully it's going to happen what I want. I'm going to kill this walker 
and then the other whacker is going to try to run up and hit into that barricade. Oh, look at that. The whacker didn't defend. Unfortunately, uh, the plan didn't be totally successful for Brian. He did hit him. He managed to, you know, sink a, a, a bullet into his chest, but not in his brain. And we all know if you shoot a zombie in the, ch in the chest, the zombie will not completely die. It will go down, but it won't die. So in that case, what happens is let's swing over here, shall we? This zombie gets BAM! Ugh! Gets dropped down, just like that. But unfortunately, every zombie now, within 10 inches, is going to shamble into Brian. And also, the threat track goes up by one every time mayhem has happened. So it goes to two. We're still good though. And I do know that with Brian, nothing else is in range except for this zombie. So this zombie is going to shamble. But zombies have to shamble in a straight line. So boom, hits the barricade. Can't do nothing else. And that kind of happened as planned to a point, but not as good as he wanted because he wanted to try to just completely kill this uh, zombie with his Beretta but he didn't do it, the walker, I mean. Oh boy, but that ends Brian's first turn of actions. We're on to the event phase right now, so what we do for the event phase is we take our kill marker, and any zombie, we have to check. And obviously, Brian is not in there. This guy, he's down, so it don't make a difference. So nothing happens for the kill zone part, but then we have to draw an event card. And we all know that with event cards, it can be very detrimental to the survivors. So let's draw the event card, shall we? Goal. Event card, please. Nothing bad, nothing bad, nothing, nothing, nothing. Plus one to the threat track. We do that first. You can see there at the upper corner. So this goes up here to three now. And it is the hunger. And we are still in all quiet, just teetering on all quiet to low threat. The walker suddenly stopped, nothing else happens. I can live with that. So let's discard it. And that ends the event phase. Onto the melee phase, and as we had the uh, kill zone template right here, well, it wouldn't move anyhow, even if it was under the kill zone, because it had to be in base base contact for melee, which none of them is, so nothing happens for the melee phase, and we're, we swing all the way over to the end phase. You now at the end phase, we had to take the black dog, we gotta roll it, because there's one prone walker, we gotta see if it stands up. On a shield, the walker's gonna stand up, so hopefully I go blank! And it's blank, that walker stays prone. Just like that. Bam! And for the rest of the end phase, I think there's nothing else left that we have to do. So there's no bit models, resolve any end of turn effects, which there's none. Check the scenario for victory conditions, which we didn't achieve anything. Increase the threat level by one. See, I'm reading it in the book, because if not, I will forget. So the threat goes from all quiet to low threat. Just like that, it can happen that fast, and we can be neck deep in some walkers. Let's go on to turn two. We're on the turn two, but none other than Maniac Katie has joined, or not joined, but can check it out. I asked her to, she was upstairs with my wife. What were you doing upstairs, Katie? Crafting. Crafting, <laughs> that's right. I love your t-shirt, by the way. Oh, so that's a, that's, you know, it's a PG, so you can't really look at that part right there. But, you know, it's a swear word, but, you know, we didn't say it on camera. Yeah, it That's right. <laughs> Katie never seen anything about The Walking Dead Out War, so I just wanted to show her because in the future, I'm thinking, you don't have to cover Katie, it's all right. <laughs> um, what I'm thinking what we're probably going to do is get Katie to play one of the uh, two player games eventually. So let's show Katie what this second turn is all about, shall we? On the Brian Blake's turn, now what he's going to do now, this walker is prone, so he can go up and try to kill the walker to get rid of it. But that is not the objective of this scenario. The objective is to capture all five supply tokens. So in that case, Brian is just going to move his way, move his way to pick up that supply token. So he's only gonna walk, he's not, or sneak, I should say. He's not gonna make noise, because when you sneak, you don't make noise. 
So if he goes up to like yay for two inches and then another inch and a half will bring him right to the supply counter. Supply token which is right there. So he's got that. And for a second action he's going to pick it up and see what it brings us. That was his second action that he had done. So he's done of his actions. So now we go on to the event phase. We have to check to see for kill zone, but I'm thinking there's gonna be no zombies at all in the kill zone because that zombie is prone still. And we already checked previously about that kill zone and Brian moved, but he is still outside of the kill zone template. So he's lucky there. So nothing else happened. So now we draw an event card. Second event card. Oh, nothing bad, nothing bad, nothing bad, nothing bad. Oh, we are, remember, we're at low threat. So low threat, move one L to walker in a direction of your choice. Oh, that's not bad at all, because you know what I'm gonna do? You know darn well what I'm gonna do. This walker right here is gonna move. He's gonna shamble, actually. Oh, and I'm gonna shamble him, or her, I should say. Six inches. I'll deal with this zombie later. Right there to the edge of the board. And that's where she shambled because you know what? Brian needs to, you know, play it smart. Keep his wits. But he still, you know, he has to give results. He has to show results to his brother Philip. Because I got a feeling he's gonna try to take over Philip's reign if he don't get eaten by a walker before that. Hmm. Because we were on to the melee phase, Brian is pretty much, well, you know, he's in base contact, I'm gonna say, because he's under an inch away. So he is going to be able to attack this prone walker. Now, I have an option. Because the Beretta has handgun as a keyword, it means that it can be used and shot at the walker. Now, because walker is, is down, it's prone, as long as you hit him, you don't have to do a headshot, that walker is removed from the game because you pretty much killed him. The walker can't do anything except for defend into this case. But when you, even if I'm in uh, melee and I use my handgun, it's going to create mayhem. Oh, and you can see this walker here will come up and bump into this. But I don't want to shoot. I want to, because all I need is just to get a hit on this walker and that walker was done so i think i'm just going to try to step on his head like stomp down do a curb stomp onto the walker's head to see if that will kill him instead of using the handgun let's do that you can see from brian's stats his melee is a white die and i had the white die and the red for the zombie so hopefully brian's going to get successful here oh two and a headshot but Zombie didn't even defend, so guess what? That zombie, Brian goes, slam! With his foot down onto his skull, and Pow! that zombie is dead Oni. That's right, dead Rooney, not dead Oni. Dead Rooney. Brian, you just killed a walker, just like that. Good job, Brian, good job. One thing you forgot to do is any melee will increase the threat track to one. Don't matter if there's like five uh, melee going at the same time, but it'll only increase by one, so that goes up. And that was Brian's first turn. No, 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 that's, we're in melee. I'm thinking like you get to hold his nerve, but that's not, because we were in the melee phase, he already did his actions. So that is it for Brian. Now, uh, in the melee, there's nothing else as you can see in the board that we can do here. So the next step and only logical step is to move on to the next one, which is the end phase. There's no prone walkers. But we still have to do one thing which I am dreading. And that is, whew, move the threat track up one more. So that is low threat to six. Now Brian, as you can see, he has a nerve rating of medium. So once he passes a medium, he has to do a panic check. Hopefully he's not gonna be able to, because I think what Brian's gonna have to do in his next turn is try to, you know, he's gonna move and then he's going to try to hold his nerve to see if he'll drop the threat track down. Brian decided, you know what? I have to make an impression on everybody that's back at the Woodshire State. 
So I'm not gonna try to hold my nerve right now. I decided that I'm just gonna try to pick up as much supplies as I can before I, the threat gets too high. And then I'll hold my nerve. So what Brian is going to do, because he thinks his brother Philip is watching him, he's going to run, which is gonna create noise, and he's gonna run up to here. Now I already measured, just to show you. He's well within range. So because of that, Brian is gonna go, he's gonna run and he's gonna tuck right there. Now because he ran to there, that creates noise. So noise means, not mayhem, but noise. The closest zombie or walker within 10 inches of where the noise is from moves and shambles. So therefore, you could say that this zombie is a walker because you can see within 10 inches, easy. So that walker goes, I heard something, but he don't really say I heard something. He's just like, and he hits, he hits this. And that's it. That is it for Brian. Oh boy. For Brian's second action, I'm thinking he's going to try to pick up the supply crate. Oh no, Brian has made a critical error. Now, I just looked in the book to find out if I was right or not, but I shouldn't have done this because now, Brian can't pick up the search token because technically that walker is in contact with the car, which is in contact with the search token. So therefore, Brian cannot pick it up for a second action. He would have to kill that walker before he could pick it up. Oh, that's not good because that just changes my plan so much. So Brian still has a second action though, and I think he may just shoot. Because he's shooting now, I'm gonna have to look in the book because I think he gets a, bonus, a benefit or a bonus because it's obstructing the line of sight. We'll see. Looking in the book, now again, this is the core rule book. We're on page 15. I found out the additional shooting rule, shooting into melee. Now, cover. The zombie has cover because it is in a car. So if you see this little insert right here, it says, for each car that the shot passes over, the target adds a white dice to the defense roll. So if Brian is going to shoot that walker, the walker is going to have the red die to defend plus a white die to defend. And it's going to create some mayhem too as well after he shoots and Mayhem increases the threat track and we don't want to go up any higher. So I don't think Brian is actually going to shoot. He may do something else. For Brian's second action, he's going to create noise. He's going to start ah, ah, jumping up there and hey, 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 over here, over here. So noise, this is the closest zombie and he's already in contact, but what he does is he's shambling. Whoops, he's kind of stuck underneath the car. He goes one inch. I did measure this, shamble is six inches. So just to show you, he came around, that was one inch. So from one inch now, you know, six inches, he's definitely gonna be able to go after Brian. And but Brian kind of been planning this. So he's going right here. Base to base contact. Oh, so now we are on to the event phase. Start of the event phase, you check the kill zone, but we already know he's in contact with him. So we don't have to do that. So the next thing we're gonna do is draw the event card, see what happens. Hopefully nothing negative is gonna happen, hopefully. One thing I wanna take note of too as well that I did incorrectly. Now again, I didn't play this game a whole lot, so I'm learning as we are going on. So this rule, it's just a small one, now, when I drew the event card, it says move any uh, eligible walker of my choice in any direction. The only problem with that, because when you're playing solo, you have to take that walker and you have to move them into the direction of the survivor instead of any direction that you choose. So this walker here where I moved, potentially wouldn't have been able to move there. It should have been moved that way. But that's a mistake I learned. You're going to keep continuing on. It's too late to rectify this. So because of that, we are just going on and grabbing the event card. But take note of that, that when you're playing a solo mission, 
It does say in the book, when you get an event card, it says to move any walker, L's walker of your choice in any direction that you want. If you're playing solo, you have to move it closer to the survivor. Here goes the event, and we are on low. Oh, distracted. Low, move one Elgin Walker in a direction of your choice. Now remember, I can move the walker, but I have to move it and the Elgin one closer to Brian Blake instead of in any direction I want, like I said before. So that's, I'm glad this card kind of pulled up again so I can rectify and not make the, the mistake continue on. So let's move one of the walkers of my choice but instead of any direction, I have to move it closer to Brian. You guessed it, I'm choosing this one, and the reason why, because that walker is going to move six inches and bump into the barricade, and that ends the event phase. Now we're on to the melee phase, and we all know, in melee, Brian's in melee, so we have to move the threat, tra threat track up to one, and then we have to resolve this melee attack. Threat track is going up to seven now. Uh oh, we're almost in medium. This is not a good thing. You know, Brian has a choice. Does he want to attack or defend? And if he attacks, is he going to shoot with his handgun? Or is he going to just do standard melee? I just, if I chose to shoot, which I can because it has the handgun into the uh, keywords for the Beretta, the problem is, is that it's going to create mayhem and then this zombie here will go on top of Brian and I don't want two walkers to be on top of Brian right away. So I think he's just going to try to punch the zombie in the head and see if that will, you know, take the zombie down. So Brian is going to attack the walker and the walker is just going to see if he can deflect it. Brian's melee is a white and the walkers is a red. Oh, it's a tie. And what happens is a tie, so survivor always wins. So what happens is this walker gets pushed back one inch. And just to make sure it's an inch, remember the thick of this range ruler is an inch. So there you go. That is what happened. Oh, Brian at least you know, they def they tied and he pushed them away. So the walker is not against here. So now Brian, hopefully in his next turn, he's gonna be able to pick up that supply counter and start getting the heck out of there. Onto the end phase part and nothing can be done here because we don't have anything we have to resolve. We don't have to check the victory because we know that Brian has to get all five supply tokens. He only picked up the one, but that's fine. And because of that, you know, like there's no prone walkers to try to roll to get up. Brian don't have any wounds yet. When I say yet, that's right, because I'm kind of expecting. So we're done of the end phase. And we're on to the next turn to see if Brian is going to be a little more successful. Before I forget, though, that's right. We got to move the threat track up one away from the medium threat. This is not a good thing at all because Brian is really struggling. Well, he's doing really good, but he's doing really bad at the same time for the threat level. Now, if he wants to hold his nerve for this one, what's going to happen is that that walker is going to be too close to him. It's going to be no good. So for Brian's action, the action phase, the first thing he's going to do is obviously it's not being contested. Now he's going to pick up that supply crate. Let's see if he finds anything good in the supplies. It just dawned on me that Brian already picked up one and I did not draw a supply card. I totally forgot. So to rectify this, I'm picking up two supply cards. So the first one from previously is going to be, ooh, an old gun, range of 10 inch. Handgun, unreliable. Adds a red die to a range attack roll. Uh, that, that's, you know, that's okay but Brian is gonna put it in his backpack, just as a backup. Second one, it's not bandages this time, but maybe bandages this one, and it's, ooh, two by four melee weapon, bludgeon. May reroll one die per melee attack roll. That is really good. He is definitely gonna be putting that into his other hand. Now, Brian has a good, melee, a good range, and he's got a good melee attack going on. 
Bam! That's good. Brian's second action, do you know what? He's gonna run. So, he is running. It's gonna create noise, I know, but that's okay. So Brian is going two inches that way. And then he is running this way, which is gonna bring him to roughly about there. I know roughly because I did measure off camera. And that creates noise though. So that zombie here, this walker, is, uh, and runs into the car. Now that's fine because there's nothing to contest because he already picked that up. And he's closer over there now. That's good for Brian. Now we are onto the event phase. For the event phase, you can tell that there's nobody, he's not in any kill zone. Right there, over there. So this is good. I'm surprised no walker has, new walker has entered the table yet. I'm shocked. So now we're going to grab the event card. And obviously I just jinxed myself. I'm gonna grab the event card and it's gonna say walkers enter play. You watch and see. Event card madness. Oh, and we are in low threat. Raise one, so it goes up to medium. Oh, that's not good, that hurts. There's a storm coming. Low, medium, and high threat. The tensions reach feverous pitch, fever pitch. Add one to the threat level, immediately draw two more event cards, apply the results one at a time. I don't like this at all. So we add one to the threat, then we gotta add one more to the threat. And then we have to do two more event cards. This is horrible. I don't like this storm card. First one, won't stay down. We are in medium, so as low threat in addition, roll a blue die and move that many eligible walkers towards the nearest survivor. So, and all quiet and low threat. For each prone walker, roll, uh, yeah, but there's no prone walker. Add one to the threat level. So I have to add one to the threat level and then I have to roll the blue die and move that many elder walkers towards the nearest survivor. Versus the threat level going up, this is looking really bad. And I'm gonna grab my blue die. Three. That's the three of them. So I have to move them all. I don't like this at all. So you can see shamble. Four, yep. So this walker is in base combat melee right now with Brian, really bad. This walker is gonna shamble six inches. Getting closer, that was a bad card and we still got Wilbur Event card to draw. And we got this walker. And that walker is going to shamble right here. I'm off camera for that one because I'm looking at the screen. But there you go. So just like that, the walkers are closing in on poor Brian. Brian is having some trouble here. He may not have any wounds, but the threat track is going up pretty fast. And if he gets to 18, he is dead. Let's pull the other event card. Next event card. The, her the herd. We are in medium. So as low threat. In addition, all prone walkers immediately stand up. There's no prone walkers, but we have to read this part and do that. Choose a walker and move it towards the nearest survivor. All elder walkers within eight inches of, a, of the chosen walker then also moves converging on the chosen walker. Oh no, this is bad, really bad. I'm gonna choose this walker. That walker moves up to six inches, I did measure. The walker ends there. You know, every walker within eight inches moves and converges onto that one. And obviously the only other one would be this one. And it converges, so it's going to also go, moving a little slow because I've got no legs, it's crawling. But it goes right there. So luckily though, if this walker was able to move up another two inches or an inch and a half, this walker would move around that walker would go in and then that walker would move up. So Brian would have more zombie walkers at him and that's no good. But luckily that was the six inch mark. Just to show you six inches for the shamble. Where's the shamble baby? So let's go to the six inch. It's 
roughly like right here, six inch, is right there where I put it. Just like that, just so nobody thinks I'm cheating because I would not do that. I love this game and I will take every curveball that happens and hits me. I may lose the game, but I'll lose it in style with flair and pure enjoyment because this game is awesome. Thank you Manta Games for making this Walking Dead All at War. It is a phenomenal game. Anyhow, let's move on. That ends the uh, event phase and we're on to the melee phase. Now we see one walker is in melee, so unfortunately the threat track again goes up to one. And then we have to resolve the combat melee. Now Brian is going to attack and he's got the two by four melee weapon so he can re-roll one die in his melee attack. And he's gonna choose to attack so he gets one voice and the walker, because he's alone, the other two are not base contact with Brian, gets one red die. Let's go, baby. Two and two. So that's a tie. But that's a bite mark. That's not a bad... But it's a tie and survivors win, so Brian will not get bit. But that walker is going to get pushed back. But that walker cannot really get pushed back because it's hitting the other miniatures. Should I re-roll it because of the bat or should I just leave it? I'm not sure what to do here. Referring to the book, when the uh, losing miniature cannot be pushed back, then the winning miniature has been pushed back. And the thing is, is Brian will be pushed back because you can't move them back because they're gonna hit there to there, which gives them an inch away. That ends the melee part of this. Oh boy, now we're on to the end phase and there's nothing really else that has to be done here except for one thing and that is unfortunately taking the threat track and moving it up one. We're almost in high and then we're gonna have to do a nerve test for Brian. This is not looking good because now Brian is, you know, like, oh, I don't know what to do here. I think Brian may just run, which would create noise. I think you know what I'm going to do here for Brian. Yeah, let's go on to the next turn. For the next turn, the camera's kind of teetering onto uh, a building right now. But Brian, what he's going to do is he's going to run. And because Brian is running, just to show you, it's 10 or eight inches to the run. He's definitely in line, whoops, camera slip, for the crate. So Brian is going, whoa, mommy, 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 mommy. And he's in contact. Now, for, his, for Brian's second action, he's gonna hold off on grabbing the search thing, but because he ran, the closest walker is going to shamble six inches, which is gonna be this guy right here and bump into there. So that's fine. No big deal for that. So what happens there is for Brian's second action, he's going to try to hold his nerve to try to drop that threat track down some because it's very dangerously getting too high for Brian's liking. We've seen this before. He's gonna to try to hold his nerve. If he gets a shield, that means that the threat track gets reduced by one. Oh, Brian, you're good because the threat track just went down by one. This is really good, but watch it be brought up again in the event phase because they're going to draw another event card. Blah! Anyhow, this is not a good thing because Brian is still going to have to fight that walker. Technically, Brian should have moved here because that's still within his 10 inch range. I'm gonna do it there just to be safe. I think he's still in the kill zone anyhow, but we will see, because I have to try to think and play it smart a little bit. I'm gonna just measure that, just to double check to make sure with his running, because I know where Brian was, he was kind of up against that part. So there's eight inches right there, you can see, and he ran to there, so that would be where we'd be at, which is good. 
So now that ends Brian's action phase. Now we're on to the event phase. First thing is checking the kill zones and then drawing another rotten event card. Kill zone just to check, he is out of it. Oh, if he stayed where he was, he would have been in there and then that zombie would have been all over him. Even though the zombie's missing legs, he can still move pretty quick for a legless zombie. So let's try the event card. Unfortunately, I really don't want to draw it because they scare me so much. Mommy! Here goes the next event card. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. And we're still in medium. Roamers, medium threat. Roll a blue die and move that many Elder Walkers towards an air survivor. I do not like this Roamer card. <laughs> okay, blue die. Now, as you can see, there's no blanks on this blue die. So I'm either gonna, I'm gonna get at least one moving closer. But no, I get two moving closer and it's two eligible walkers. Mm, but it does say, uh, and move that many elder walkers towards an air survivor. <laughs> I may not, I may move the two further ones back. Let me check. I did measure and the card does say, Eligible walkers, I rolled a two on the blue die, so I get to two, move two. And I'm not moving this one, forget that, because he's gonna be on top of him. I did measure. Now, this walker here is gonna go, and just hit it to there. And if it went through the walker, it would hit there. So I'm just gonna move him there. This walker is not within six inches. I mean, uh, tight, because I measured. And it has to stop within one inch unless it's on top, and it definitely is not. So it's got to move back just a little bit more. Come on, Walker. There you go. So Brian is so, so lucky, but Brian got to get the heck out of there. You can pick that up for his next one, and then try to go here to get this one. This one, there's only two supply tokens left. Hopefully, he's going to be successful into this. Uh, I got my doubts so I'm kind of tapping my chest if you're hearing some clunking there because I'm getting a little worried and excited at the same time. But we're on to... What are we on to? Let me check. We're on to the melee part and you can see that they're not in melee, none of them. So the threat track stays exactly where it is. There's no melee that's going on. So then we are on to the end phase. Oh, actually, no, I'm skipping ahead here because I don't want to grab that. Uh, oh, no, we're, we're past the event. So, yeah, I'm not skipping ahead. See, I'm getting all worked up here because my plans are falling apart for poor Brian here. In any case, you know, what Brian's going to do is it's on to the end phase. No prone walker gets up. And we got to do one thing again, which is horrible. I'm trying to avoid that. But we move this threat track up one more time. That's horrible, horrible stuff. Now we're back on to the next turn and it's Brian. I'm thinking Brian may do a run to get as far as away as he can, which is gonna create noise and one's gonna shamble. And then on top of that, he may do a hold your nerve. I think that's what he might do. Or he may just pick one, pick it up and then try to run. But the thing is he's gonna get into the high threat level. He needs to try to hold his nerve. There's so many things that has to be done, but he's not able to do them all. As said before, Brian is a man of action, and he wants to show his worth into the small gated community of Worshire Estate? I think that's what it's called. In either case, he wants to show his worth. So I was originally gonna say, you know, run and hold your nerve, but now nah, Brian's gonna say, nah, first action. He's gonna pick up this supply counter and we're going to see what he gets for supplies. Hopefully something good, something good in it. Nothing. Incident, you find nothing of use. What? He finds nothing. That sucks. Like, what the hell? That, that, oh, very angry. 
That was a complete waste of time, but he still picked up the supply thing. He can take back an empty box because they can fill it with good stuff to store it, I guess. In any case, you can see I got the uh, range ruler down because for Brian's second action, he's not going to walk. He is running. Ah, he's running and he's going right here. And he's hugging right there. It's like, hey, I wonder what's in that crate. I guess we'll find out next turn. So we are on to the event phase right now because Brian did his two actions and you can see these are the only walkers on the board and none of them are in Brian's kill zone. But Brian did run and it did create noise. So we are going to have to shamble one of these walkers, the closest one, which is the blue haired girl walker right here. I keep bumping into everything on the game. And she run, shambles into a straight line. So I got my noise. It's, well, actually, no, it's just shamble is six inches. So she's actually just going to go right up to here. But with the six inch mark, she stopped short by just the here. We might as well say she's in base contact with that. So she is going to dispute Brian from picking that up. So Brian is going to have to kill her before he's able to grab this supply token and make his way to the next supply token. So that created noise, that zombie shambled six inches, and then we're on to the event phase. Uh, checking the kill zone, obviously Brian is definitely in that zombie walker kill zone, so because that zombie then is going to come around. Hello, how are you? So therefore they are going to have to do some dueling in the melee part. Uh-oh. But he knows he's going to have to fight her anyhow. So he's just, you know, he, he's ready. He, he's, he's in ready position, ready mode to just try and whack that zombie. But let's going to draw the event card now. I don't like the events. There's, they, they can cause a lot of havoc. And our threat level is really bad already because it's at um, 13. That's right. As you can see, that is the threat level right now. So we are going to draw our next event card. And that is going to be plus one to the threat track. Lovely. So now it goes to high. And it, it says medium high threat. The groans get louder. Add two to the threat level. Oh, I don't like that at all. That's going up to 16. So we're two away from, you know, not finishing this game. This is really bad. Brian is going to be, he's in some severe trouble right now. And that is not a good thing because, oh, why did you have to come in at us? Brian, why did you have to do that run to attract that walker? So that ends the event phase. And then we are on to the melee phase. And you can see Brian's locked in melee. So that threat track, We'll go up one more. Meh, lovely. And now we're going to have to do the combat. Now, if Brian shoots, it's going to create mayhem and the noise track is going to go up. So he cannot shoot. Is he going to defend or is he going to attack? Defend or attack? Defend or attack? Brian is choosing, he's just going to go all in and try to attack. You can see he's doing really well that he's got no help, but he's doing really bad here because he's very close to, you know, finishing off and, you know, being overrun by the walkers. But he has the two by four, so that gives him a reroll because it has bludgeon onto it. So it's a white die for Brian for melee and a red for the zombies. Let's do the zombie one first. Actually, let's get the blue die away. One. Brian got to beat that. Come on, Brian, you can do that. Two. Oh, look at that. Ba -ba Boom. That's right. So what happens there is Brian wins by one. So it hits back an inch, just like so. Just a little shadow there. And the zombie is knocked prone. Good job, Brian. Good job. Oh, but this is still really scary because the threat track, it's not doing, he's not doing too well for the threat track. You can see he's just waiting there patiently or impatiently he's like what am i gonna do what am i gonna do he's gonna have to try to hold his nerve 
uh, for his, on his next action to try and drop that down. But anyhow, that ends the melee phase, and then we are on to the end phase. And with the end phase, nothing has to be done except for... Oh, I just realized something. First thing, we have to see if uh, that zombie will stand up. It's blank, so that zombie does not stand up. That zombie is still not prone. There's nothing else that really has to be done here. Um, but there's a problem. Now, Brian is going to have to uh, check to see if he's going to hold his nerve. But it makes no sense right now because at the end of the end phase, you have to increase the threat by one. And you can see right there, the threat goes to one. And you know what that means? Because it is on that horrible, horrible zombie face. It's a cool drawing, cool artwork, but it's horrible because it means one thing. And that means that Brian did not succeed. He was a little too overconfident he was a little too pushy, and he should have been holding his nerve a lot more, but he didn't. So because of that, Brian is gone, and the walkers take over the area. Oh, that is so bad. Bad, bad, bad. Why, Brian? Why, Brian Blake? Did you have to just keep pushing ahead and trying and just not listening, not thinking clearly and just pushing ahead more and more to try to show your brother Philip that you can do it. Because obviously you are not ready to be the governor. Not ready yet. So because of that, you caused us to lose the game. And also luckily though, the community is gated. So because of that, you know, the community still lives on, but Brian Blake, he goes back empty handed, or maybe you don't go back at all because the zombies just overthrow the area. And when the zombies overthrow an area, the zombie force will push, 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 and eventually just poof, knock down the fences. Ouch. Oh. There you have it, board game maniacs. That is the second part of Prelude to Woodbury. And I got all this mission from directly in the book that you get when you purchase the standalone expansion, Prelude to Woodbury for The Walking Dead All at War by Mantic Games. What a crazy game. It's crazy fun when I say crazy. Very intense. You, you know, you think you got all this planning. You think you're getting everything done, like, you know, he picked up a lot of the supply counters, picked up three of them, and unfortunately, because of his running, he created noise and caused melee, and that kind of just done him in right there, because poor Brian, poor, poor Brian. That's all right, though, because you learn next time when he goes out, if he makes it back to the gated community, then maybe he will just succeed next time. <sighs> Hope you enjoyed this battle report board game maniacs. You maniacs. You board game playing maniac people. That's right. This is a tabletop game, it's not board game. But it's still an awesome game. I, like, I can't say this enough of how much I enjoy playing this game. Number one, I love zombies. Number two, I very much enjoy The Walking Dead world and the comic books and everything else. And number three, the mechanics of this are nice and sound and it can create a lot of fun gameplay on solos or playing with a friend too as well. And then you have the zombies thrown in there as an extra mechanic to try to stop both parties. Incredible game. I can't say enough, like I said, about this game because it's a lot of fun. Except for thank you very much Mantic Games for making this game because, you know, I'll continue playing this. 
Hope you enjoyed this board game maniacs on this channel. Um, just to talk a little bit more about what's coming up in the board game maniacs YouTube channel and the Twitch channel too, as well as we are going to start live streaming. Who knows? Maybe one day we're going to do a live streaming event of the Walking Dead All at War. Never know. But stay tuned to the channel for updates. I'm going to be posting periodic updates all the time about what's going on for the live streaming, along with the dates of when we're going to be doing live streaming so that you can uh, go into the YouTube channel or go into the Twitch channel and you can watch the live streaming that's going to go on. It's not going to be just me playing the games by myself all the time. It's going to be with other board game maniacs obviously too as well but i may have some solo missions in there from time to time and we're going to be playing other things like a big announcement that i just did recently which is we're going to be playing star finder role-playing game it is a futuristic pathfinder game and we're going to be streaming it live and that's starting in the new year and we're going to be doing it like every third saturday of the month creating the characters, going through a pre-written campaign from the book. And from there, who knows what's gonna happen. And we're also gonna be streaming some VR games. We're gonna be streaming some uh, Steam video games like Friday the 13th and so on. So there's a lot of things that are happening on Board Game Maniacs channel. I hope you're gonna be a part of this growth with Board Game Maniacs. You're going to Tune in like you always do. You're going to hit the like button. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button. You'll be entered in for different draws that are going to be going on through Board Game Maniacs too as well. And on top of that, you can go to Patreon and you can look up Board Game Maniacs and you can donate to help us keep continuing playing this game, keeping the lights on having high quality videos and everything. Just show some love if you want to. In either case, just watching the videos, subscribing, commenting, sharing, that's showing me love right there too as well and I appreciate every little bit of it. Thank you very much to all you maniacs out there watching this and doing all that you do because without you, this Board Game Maniacs channel would not exist. We wouldn't be playing these games on the channel to show you the viewers about the different games the fun games the challenging games and everything else that's rolled up into a ball of maniacs that's right so until next time board game maniacs have fun talk to people communication is key no matter what environment you're in like a zombie apocalypse or any kind of relationship work relationship home relationship you name it Communication is the only thing that's going to keep it going. That is right. So until next time, you know what I'm going to say? Be a walker. I mean, yeah, um, no, I know what I'm going to say. Make sure you wear your pants when you go outside. No. What is it I'm going to say? Oh, yeah, this, this clip is getting really long. So just remember one thing and one thing only. Sincerely from my heart and the bottom of my toes, and that is, be a maniac.